Ladies, it's the end of the week and today we have the topic work-life balance. It's a topic which for us women is uh, often uh, a complicated topic, especially when you work from home. How do I create a work-life balance when I'm working at home? Well, first of all, if it is possible, I would highly recommend you to have a, a separate room, a room where you can close the door and that's where you'll be sitting uh, working. So working in the kitchen or working in the living room where everybody walks in and out is surely not a good place to work. When you have kids and they are at home and when they are small, what I always used to do is my kids always played out a lot with friends uh, from school or uh, some friends came along. What I then did is I, I sat down with them, had something to drink, had something to eat, and then they went off and play. But as soon as they are four or five years, you don't need to be there all the time if they play together. So that is a good time for you to be able to do some work. Probably not phone calls, and probably you would want to sit in the room then because you can keep an eye on them. Uh, but you can check email, you can do social media in those times. You need to have a conversation with the people in your house. So they need to respect the fact that you are working, even though you are in the house. So you are not available within those hours. It's an illusion to have a perfect up and running business and have perfect raised kids if you want to do all of that on your own. So you need to make choices and you can't do everything perfect. And I'm not saying you should neglect your kids, not at all. Um, I took my kids out of school three days a week and the other two days they went to uh, daycare. So you should not feel guilty about that. Um, working from home is a choice. Well, not always, but uh, often it's a choice. If you only choose for your children and you do your business on the side, you also need to accept that your business is not going to be hugely successful. No matter what business coaches tell you, it's, it's very difficult to be able to have a very successful uh, business, even when it's just online, when you are also full-time mom. So again, you need to set boundaries with your kids, with your other people in the house, and they need to respect the fact that you are not available. I treat my working day as if I am a day in the office. You, you, you need to be um, determined about that. You need to have uh, boundaries for yourself and don't think, oh, it's just, uh, it's just five minutes and then it's 10 minutes this, and then it's five minutes that, and all oh, the kids, it's, not, it's really important now. For kids, it's always important. Everything is always important for kids. Um, so it's up to you to decide if it's important or not, or if you let them disturb you. And also, if you do all these little house tasks in between, you cannot be focused. So that's really important. You need to have focus when you work. And when you have an hour focus, there's a lot you can do. Uh, for, for you, you need to set boundaries within yourself, but also within your, uh, the people living in your house, your family. And you need to have a lot of discipline. And discipline is you, you need to be able to manage your voice in your head, which says, oh, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it now. Oh, no, that's okay. Oh yeah, what's, what's wrong, sweetie? Oh, do you want this? Kids should be able to be without you for a, a, couple, of t a couple of hours or an hour. And, and like I said, that's, that's why I uh, didn't mind when, when friends came over to the house when my kids were small or when my kids went to other friends. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was great. Many of the moms that um, were at school, they had a, a regular job. They didn't have a business. So for them, when their job was over, it was over. But you know, when you have a business, it's never over. So there's always work. It's never done. It's never finished. 
the phone keeps ringing, emails keep popping up, social media keeps coming up. The next question is, how do I set boundaries with my clients? First of all, when you can't set boundaries with yourself, how can you even expect to set boundaries to your clients? If you don't respect the boundaries you set, if your family does not respect the boundaries you set, and that's due to you, it's not due to them, because you accept the behavior happening. So it's like, if you accept a certain behavior once, you're gonna accept it again. And it's gonna be more and more difficult to alter that around. Same with your kids. If you work from home and you accept that they disturb you every time, every they don't even knock on the door. So they, they need to knock on the door because you need to say yes or no. You don't, they don't know if you're in a conversation. They don't know if you're recording a video. If you don't say anything, they cannot enter the room. And that's maybe not the kind of mom you want to be, but there's nothing wrong with that. Kids need to learn how to cope with boundaries. They need to learn that their parents are not always accessible at any time they want. Please, ladies, you are not doing your kids a favor when you're not setting boundaries. So it's really, really important that you set boundaries for yourself, you set boundaries for your kids, for your husband, when you work at home. And even when you have no business, it's still important to set those boundaries. So setting boundaries for your clients starts with setting boundaries for yourself. Don't do all the things in between. Don't think, oh, I can do this now and, and work later. Because you, it, you'll start to create a habit and you need to alter that in creating a new habit and take your work a lot more seriously. Take your business very seriously. So setting boundaries with your clients starts in the beginning. And when you find it difficult to express your boundaries, send them your rules, send them a, a, a sheet of paper. Uh, this is how it works. If you cancel a meeting within 48 hours, it's a paid meeting. Uh, if you didn't do your homework, I will accept that three, four times and then we need to quit. Even though if you need their money, you need to set those boundaries. Then, because there's no fun, well, there's no fun for me. If I work with people and they have excuses all the time, if they do, at some point I say, hey, we're going to quit. Because I know I need to be the best version of myself and I'm not the best version of myself. If I'm disappointed, with the uh, effect my mentoring has on the clients. And, and when you're a slave of money, and I know <laughs> it sounds easy to say, but I really also have uh, periods that I don't have a lot of income, uh, I still have my boundaries that I don't work with clients who I don't like or don't get results just because I need the money. Um, and, and that's always been rewarded because when I quit with a client, all of a sudden a new one comes out of nowhere. That's the energy part. How to deal with clients when they feel entitled to your time without working hours? Well, don't pick up the phone. Don't answer their emails. Don't answer their tech mess text messages. It's just the way it is. You have to set your boundaries. For some cultures, that is not easy. I know that and especially for women, and, and we have that within us, that we need to be there for other people. We feel good when we can look after other people, but we also need to be able to look after ourselves. And setting boundaries is looking after yourself and taking care of yourself in a very high level. It's, it's just saying no. Setting boundaries is taking yourself serious and valuing yourself a lot. Is having the perfect work-life balance possible at all? So this is the word perfect is a woman thing. We want things to be perfect. We need to look perfect. Our kids need to be perfect. Our house needs to be perfect. The inside, the outside, our garden. I started giving up being perfect a long, long time ago. And I had a meeting yesterday evening with a couple of ladies and a few of them are very perfect. Um, and I can see also the benefits in, for example, 
uh, how to express on social media, how the website looks and everything. So I then can also see, okay, I've given up being perfect, but not everybody has. <laughs> the people who are looking for perfectionism, they might not like me that much, <laughs> but that's okay. I know I always do my best and if that's not good enough, they are not my client. But is the perfect work-life balance possible? I would say no. First of all, you need to know what is balance. Is a work-life balance balanced on a scale? Does it need to be equal? Do you need to be having equal amount of time for work or, uh, and private life? You need to answer that question first to be able to know if it's even possible to have your perfect life uh, and work balance. So perfect, it's something we, we torture ourselves with, with perfectionism. And because we want to have a perfect life balance, we are not satisfied about it. It's all due to an opinion we have. First of all, you need to know what your perfect work-life balance is. And I would say not perfect, but what is your work-life balance? And then even if you think, hey, this is going to be my work-life balance, and especially when you have kids, and basically a business is also a kid, something can happen and whoa, your balance is gone. And then if you want to have the perfect work-life balance, you're going to feel bad about that. If you don't need to have a perfect work-life balance, but if you want to feel happy uh, and content with whatever you're doing in the moment, then you are going to find that you will are creating a perfect work-life balance. But it's different because you look at things different. So you perceive it differently. So it's got nothing to do with the balance you're creating. It's, it's often to do with how you perceive it. It's harmony. It's your perception of not how you want it to be, but how you feel in the moment. And if you feel stressed, you have been thinking thoughts that are not serving you. Because I know for a fact, we women, we can do a lot. We can achieve a lot. I and mean, yes, sometimes we can do a lot of the things at the same time. Not perfect though. That's not, that's not possible, it's an illusion. So if we can give up being perfect and being happy with whatever we're doing in the moment, you start to feel more at peace. And guess what? That's when you start to feel more balanced. And that's exactly the situation I am in. I've been struggling a lot, but now at home I'm experiencing peace. Has the situation changed? Well, not initially, but it changed because I changed how I looked at it and how I wanted to feel around the, the situation at home. So because I changed, I changed how I looked at things, I changed what I accepted and what I would not accept. And I decided to accept a lot more and that was against my beliefs, but my beliefs have changed because now there's a lot more peace and quiet in my house. And that's the same for your work-life balance. It's all about how do you look at it? How do you want it to be? And then you need to start looking at it differently and starting to behave differently. And then the people in your house start to react and respond to that and also start to behave differently towards you. So do schedule a short 15 minute call with me. If you have a business to business clients or when you want to work with business to business clients, because that's my strength. I can really help you scale and grow fast and double your income in a year. And I guarantee this to my clients. So it's not an empty promise. Well, maybe we talk soon and I won't be selling you during the 15 minutes. It's getting to know you. And for me finding out, can I even help you? If I don't think I can, why should I take you on as a client? Because you won't be happy, I won't be happy and I will be getting a bad reputation. And I don't want that. I don't only want the money, I want the success. Okay, bye-bye ladies.